Welcome back to the channel. There's new information about the 100 million fine on Rolex and the implications look worse than we thought. Let's get into it. We'll cover the following today. First, I'll give a very quick summary of what happened with a focus on the actual legal question. Second, we'll do a quick Q&A. There were a lot of questions on the last video, including some confusion about the actual ruling and what it said. So my hope is that we can break it down and provide clarity to this situation. Finally, we'll go over the new information and discuss why it's really bad for Rolex. I mean it, it looks really bad. A viewer said that Macron heard my French pronunciation and called Interpol to have me arrested. So I won't try to pronounce it again. I'll show the text as the names come up. The French Trade Authority has fined Rolex $100 million. Let's be very clear about the reason why. It specifically has to do with this clause inserted into the Rolex AD agreement. And it reads, we confirm that under no circumstances can our authorized retailers, who are the only parties authorized to sell our products, do so via the internet or by mail order. Any sales via the internet contravene the provisions of Article 4 dot three dot B of the selective distribution agreement signed by all our authorized retailers. Now we'll get into what that means exactly during the Q and A segment, but basically this provision was declared anti-competitive and Rolex is penalized for enforcing this ban for the past 10 years. That's the summary. If you want more details, watch my last video where I break it all down. Now let's answer some questions from viewers that kept coming up in the last video. How can France tell Rolex, a private company, what to do with their watches? Doesn't Rolex have a right to sell their watches as they see fit? Yes, Rolex does have that right. However, that is not the legal issue at hand. Let me draw you a picture. People are thinking that Rolex is selling watches directly to the consumer, as you can see in this diagram. But we know that is not the situation. Watch collectors are not the customers of Rolex. Actually, it's the authorized dealers. As you can see in this diagram, the ADs pay Rolex for the allocation of watches, and after they pay, then legally, the ADs are the true owners of the watches. Do you see that? So is France a pinko communist country, bullying poor humble Rolex and forcing them to sell online? No. In fact, the French trade authority is taking the opposite position. Respect for private property rights is a foundation for capitalism. And in this case, the French trade authority is saying that we are protecting the private property rights of the Rolex ADs. As you saw in the diagram, the ADs are the owners of the watches. So does Rolex get to dictate how they will advertise and sell their own watches? The French trade authority is saying, no, you can't do that. Especially when the terms are designed to limit competition between ADs and harm the consumer. So in fact, is Rolex trying to bully the ADs into compliance? What's the point? The ADs have no inventory anyways. What difference do online sales make in practice? Now that's a good point. However, I do know that ADs would love the option of selling online. And that's the crux of the issue. Demand is going down. The hype is not like before. You know that. And having the right to sell their own watches online is something the ADs do want. Maybe not immediately, but what about the future? So it's less about practicality and more about legal rights of ownership. Can't Rolex simply cancel their AD agreements? Rolex can even leave France and stop selling there. That would be a drastic solution that likely would get them into more trouble. First, I really doubt that Rolex wants to lose all those sales. They are the number one selling watch brand in France. But the real problem is that in this legal context, it raises more questions about the anti-competitive practices. And think about what that means. Rolex would be tacitly admitting that their AD agreement is illegal because they are not challenging the ruling. They need to fight this in the courts. And taking all their marbles and running away would definitely get them into trouble with the higher EU courts. Rolex doesn't care about the 92 million euro fine. They can sell three watches and cover the cost. Well, I'm pretty sure they do care. No one has 92 million euros to throw away. 
That's not how a business operates. However, that's not the central issue. Rolex has to find an answer to having the AD clause declared illegal. If they continue to ban online sales, there may be additional penalties assessed, and no business wants that. Then Rolex can cancel all AD agreements and build their own sales network. The AD screwed themselves. That is a possibility. However, it's not that easy. They do have a start with the purchase of Booker, but building out a directly owned worldwide sales network would take millions of dollars and years of development. The investment would be staggering, especially at a time when they are also spending capital to increase production. And what does Rolex do while this network is being built out? It's a massive commitment. Now, let's get into the new info because it's very troubling for Rolex. The first thing to know is that with this ruling comes some compliance actions. Rolex has to notify all their ADs in France of this decision, meaning it's possible that those ADs may start selling watches online. Also, Rolex has to display this decision on their official website for seven consecutive days. And finally, to rub salt on the wounds, Rolex has to publish this notice in the two biggest magazines in France, Le Figaro or Montre magazine. Wow, talk about being put on notice. And this compliance has huge implications because here is the new information. It's something that I didn't fully explore in the first video. This all started because a former Rolex AD, Pellegrin and Phils, said it had been cut from the AD network in 2013 without legal justification. The retailer stated that this removal happened when they tried to convince Rolex to allow online sales. And this action was a retaliation to make an example of the AD. This was an act of intimidation to keep all the other ADs in compliance. Do you see the problem with that? And there's more. The legal action was submitted by both the former Rolex AD and the largest jewelry trade organization in France. That is very troubling. So it's not a single AD angry at Rolex. By proxy, the entire jewelry industry in France took legal action against Rolex. You know the old saying, this means war. And here's the worst thing for Rolex. Winning an appeal in France is very unlikely. As I said in the first video, the competition authority has a record of winning in the courts. And the only other option is to appeal to the EU courts. But that in fact might be a trap. What happens if Rolex loses with the European Commission? That would mean that the AD agreement would be declared illegal all over the EU. Wow. Do you see the dilemma for Rolex? Betting on an appeal with the higher EU courts could result in absolute disaster. And we've seen what happened to Microsoft and Google. They are so much bigger than Rolex, and yet they lost their own competitive cases. Okay, we covered a lot. That's enough for today. I'll see you in the next video.